Julio Cesar Martinez and Angelino Cordova faced each other for Martinez's WBC flyweight title. And it was a battle. We're talking about two men in this division who gave every ounce of themselves. Let's talk about this fight and what could be on the horizon for either man. When talking about the flyweights, some people do not like to entertain themselves when the men are so small. But let me tell you something about the flyweights. They show some of the most huge heart that the sport of boxing could ever hope and dream to put on display. And such was the case when Julio Cesar Martinez defended his WBC flyweight title against Angelino Cordova on Saturday, March 30th. It was a fight that brought both men under the gun and spotlight on the undercard of Zhu versus Fondora. But what was even more entertaining was to see the power and the display of machismo between two men such slight in stature. I mean, when you talk about Martinez, who's 5'2", with a 64 inch reach, and Cordova, who's 5'4", with a 65 and a half inch reach, they're not such big men, but boy, do they carry big guns. And no bigger gun was on display on Saturday night than the shotgun jab of Martinez in the opening stanza of the fight, seeing him drop Cordova twice early on. And what was really interesting was the fact that it looked like it might be over for Cordova early because the shots caught him by surprise and they had him literally hurt. He had to survive after being down twice in the third round of the match. He got up and then he went to work. This fight reminded me so much of the original first fight between Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez. And Cordova, whose record now is 18 and one with 12 KOs, gave a tremendous account of himself trying to battle the champion. He went in and threw punches with bad intentions, sometimes knocking Martinez off balance, but never jeopardizing him enough to put him in jeopardy of either going to the canvas, let alone be knocked out. But you had to give him credit for the shots that he was landing. In the case of Martinez, his left hand appeared to be the Achilles of Cordova. Every time he was able to land a solid left, whether it be a jab or a hook, he would rock Cordova off balance. And his record now moves on to 21 and three with 15 KOs. Martinez has been known to pound his gloves and beckon his opponents in as if to say, bring it, let's go toe to toe. And in this fight, we had a chance to see Cordova answer those beckons. Not consistently where he just languished on the inside, which I don't like when fighters do, but he did pick spots to battle Martinez and he pretty much held his own. 
but you could clearly see that Martinez was the stronger of the pair and even though he was looking to hurt his opponents with single shots, it was Cordova's combinations that made the difference. By the end of the fight, you could see the wear and tear that Martinez had taken from the battle, but Cordova was really not as strong for some reason. I would have loved to find out what these men rehydrated to because that's where I saw the strength of Martinez prevailing. He's a tough customer, always has been a heady and brave fighter looking to be aggressive. He also looks to fight his opponents toe to toe. For whatever reason, even though he can box, he doesn't look to box, he looks to fight. And fighting is a little bit different from slugging because sluggers will just trade punches indiscriminately. Fighters will get in the thick of and fray of the battle where they can take some, give some, slip, counter, and that's where Martinez seems to shine with what he brings to the ring. He seemingly does this each and every outing. Eventually, it'll catch up to him because someone is going to be smart enough to take advantage of the mistakes that he makes. But until then, we can continue to be entertained by what he brings. Martinez fights with all of his heart and guts on the line each and every time out. And it was surprising to see Cordova after the early setbacks of the knockdowns to come out and give his all in a sense that you could see his workings on the face of Martinez as the fight grew on. He was able to throw combinations and be fierce. He would tie up when he was rocked or rattled, but he would throw his shots. But Martinez, I believe, the rehydrated weight helped him sustain. If I'm not mistaken, Cordova actually moved up to this weight from a smaller weight, and he hasn't necessarily settled in as he may in a few months to a year from now. But yet and still, these guys gave us a hard-earned battle worthy of mention, which is why I'm talking about it. I do like to cover the sport and talk about good quality boxing, the matchups, and what can be learned from the circumstances surrounding a particular fight. When you see guys get rocked, when you see them get knocked down and they get back up and they battle and soldier on. And champions who turn back challenges for their titles like Martinez did in this fight. The fight was very close, but I do think he won the fight. But Cordova is coming on and he should be looked at for a future opportunity. As far as Martinez, if he looks to unify against the likes of Bam Rodriguez, what a fight that could turn out to be. We know that Bam has serious power at this weight, and he's a great deal more technically proficient, but a fighter with the heart like Martinez may be just what Bam needs until it's over. But what do you think? This is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty LDBC and Liberated Perspective, a third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let me know what your thoughts are about this battle between Angelino Cordova and Julio Cesar Martinez. Peace to everyone out there, and everyone please remain safe.